here we're going to talk about the molecular formula. Now, it sounds a lot fancier than it really is. It's really a way in which, which we represent a molecule. When there's more than one atom in a molecule, then we need to represent it somehow in a formula. And so these are representations of what we call molecular formulas. Now, in this case, uh, well, let's first see what the definition is. We have the molecular formula shows what? It shows the exact number of atoms of each element in a molecule. So in this case, we have H2, which means there's two hydrogen atoms in this molecule. Here's N2, that means there's two nitrogen atoms in the molecule. O2, two oxygen atoms in the molecule. Here we have HCl. This is hydrogen chloride, or also known as hydrochloric acid. It's a very corrosive acid, but it has one molecule of hydrogen and one mole molecule of, I, sh I should say, one atom of hydrogen and one atom of chlorine forming a molecule of hydrochloric acid. Here we have H2O. Almost everybody recognizes that as the formula for water. There's two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. Here we have what we call ammonia, one atom of nitrogen, three atoms of hydrogen. Here we have what we call hydrogen peroxide. Now that's something that we use uh, for medical purposes to clean out wounds and so forth. And so here we have two atoms of hydrogen, two atoms of oxygen forming a molecule of four atoms. Here we have what we call dinitrogen tetrahydride. Now di means two and tetra means four. So there's two nitrogen atoms and there's four hydrogen atoms and so we call that dinitrogen tetrahydride or we can also call it hydrazine which is a common name for this particular molecule and it's a very flammable uh, molecule and so therefore it's used for rocket fuel. Here we have something that we use for the human body, glucose, it's a form of sugar. It has six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms and six oxygen atoms all together so there's a total of 24 atoms in this single molecule. So now that you understand how we set up formulas, and of course the names of the formulas can get quite complicated, and we'll show you some videos on how to figure out the names of a number of these, these uh, molecule, molecular names or formula names, uh, we want to at least understand that once you know how a molecule is formed and how many atoms of each type or each element are within that molecule, we should be able to figure out things such as the molar mass of carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide has two atoms of oxygen and one atoms of carbon in each molecule. Since the mass of one carbon is approximately equal to 12 atomic mass units, and the mass of one oxygen is about, is a, well actually this would be exactly 12 AMUs, and for oxygen it's approximately 16 AMUs per, uh, per atom. Since there's two of them, we have to double that. So the mass of carbon dioxide, mass of carbon dioxide, is equal to the mass of one carbon, so it's one times 12 AMUs, because there's one carbon, plus two times the mass of an oxygen. So plus two times 16 AMUs, so two times 16 is 32, plus 12 is 44, so this is equal to 44 AMUs, which is the mass of a single carbon dioxide uh, molecule. So now what if they ask you, what is the percent mass of carbon in a glucose molecule? So we go back over here and we want to know what percentage of the mass is attributed to the carbon as opposed to the whole molecule. So again, we will have to find the molecular mass, or in this case, the atomic mass of a glucose atom. So we can say that this is equal to, so the mass is equal to, six times the mass of a carbon atom, so six times 12 AMUs, six times 12 AMUs, that would be the mass of all the carbon atoms in that molecule, plus we have 12 times one AMU, because the mass of a hydrogen atom is roughly one AMU, so we have 12 of those, plus six times and we have oxygen, which is 16 AMUs. And we add all that together. 6 times 16, that's 60 times 36 is 96. Uh, 6 times 72, uh, 6 times 12 is 72, so 96 plus 72, that's 98, that's uh, 168. Plus 12 times 1, that's another 12, that would be 180 AMUs. So one molecule of glucose, which has 
a total of 12 plus 12 or 24 atoms in it has a total atomic mass of 180 AMUs. Now what percentage of that is carbon? Well, the percentage that makes up carbon is right here. So what we can do is the percent carbon is equal to the ratio of carbon, so that would be 6 times 12 AMUs, divided by the total which is 180 AMUs times 100% because we want to convert that ratio to percentage and then this would be equal to 72 over 180 times 100% and of course what is 72 divided by 180? Let's see here, 72 divided by 180 hmm, that's the wrong one, so 72 divided by 180 equals and it shows up as 40%. So that means that once we know how to look at the what we call molecular form of a molecule, we can then figure out what the mass of each constituent is. We can figure out the mass of the whole molecule, and then we can take the ratio, multiply times 100%, and then we can figure out the percentage of each constituent in the molecule as a percentage of the whole molecule. In this case, carbon is 40% in mass of the glucose molecule. And that's how we work with the molecular formula.